Welcome back to HGC North America, where there is a lot on the line here over this next series, the last series of, of this weekend between Tweet. Oh man, be be Team 12. I can't you say the name. Are, I can't say it. it. It's between Team 12 and Heroes Heart. There we go. Nailed it. I'm a commentator. All right. Anyways, with that remix there, though, but no, it is so much on the line. Uh, the upset there from the reverse sweep that happened in day number one over week seven uh, against Team 12. And then Heroes Hearth and Gale Force Esports, they have very similar, at least strengths. I don't want to say play styles, but definitely strengths as teams. And so suddenly, I, I feel like originally we looked at this and it was kind of like, oh, probably a Team 12 win. But now there is so much on the line, so much kind of out the window after those results. What are your thoughts? I couldn't agree with you more. If you look at Heroes Hearth versus Gale Force, the back line, obviously Biggie kind of plays that carry role a little bit more. So does Crowan, although Crowan's kind of like that top tier, right? And then you've got Arthel on the ultimate flex. Michael Udall, we've seen a lot of flexibility out of him. And then you look at the melee role. You've got McIntyre versus uh, B-Kid. And McIntyre known to play a lot of assassins, but both of these players, him and B-Kid, starting to play a little bit more of that tank role, starting to enable that back line. There's a lot of similarities, I think, when we look at that, even some of the hero pools between these supports and things like that. You start to see a lot of similarities in the play style, in the way that they like to do things. So Team 12, could be looking at a little bit of a repeat in terms of style, but Heroes Hearth does have a little bit more, I guess, like a little bit of flavor there when you add Arthalon in there. Uh, very much so. And, you know, they've had that kind of recent success looking at the first part of phase number one. But we need to provide some context here when looking at these standings as to why so much is on the line. As Tempo has furthered their lead at the top of NA to two now after that last series. But the biggest thing there is that Team 12 fell down out of that caliber along with Tide of a Team Freedom, but then winning over in that second seed slot. Now sitting at third, then we have Team T or Heroes Hearth coming in, having tied up on score. And Gale Force Esports sitting right on their tail, both of them down just only one series there. It's interesting because if you look at Heroes Hearth, I put a lot of expectations into them coming into the year. They opened up starting 0-2 in their series. Since then, they've won six out of their last seven series. They are on a roll. Their only series that they did drop to was that Gale 4 series, which was a close one, to say the least. And, you know, obviously the grudge match was kind of, you know, won over in terms of Heroes Hearth. And so kind of getting back in, you know, trying to get back into that lane that Cron talked about, you know, making sure he stayed in it. So he got there. And I think that the fact that they've won six out of their last seven, there's very few teams that can say that right now. And for them to just be gaining momentum, gaining momentum, if they start to win out and then they may go up against Tempo Storm, because Tempo Storm was their opening, you know, kind of weekend. It's like, yeah. hey, welcome to HGC. I know a few of your faces, but a couple of you are new. And so now it's like, I'm really looking forward to that rematch to see if that can continue. And maybe Tempo Storm slips up and Heroes Hearth wins out. All of a sudden, we've got a tie maybe for that number one spot. There's a lot to consider, and then Team 12 is almost in the exact same spot in terms of if they went out and then go up against Tempo. So there, it's it's really interesting right it now. It is. It's going to be a thing that kind of sets the tone here for North America. But we, you know, I feel like this is going to be interesting here to hear the thoughts and the confidence between these two teams before this series. Because again, this was bef interviewing Justin before they ended up having the performance against Gale Force. So we're going to really be able to hear how confident they actually were up against Heroes Art Esports. Team 12 has been steadily improving a lot, actually. They looked pretty dominant, even in, say, you know, practice and leading up to uh, the first week of, of this part of HGC. I think they looked really, really strong. We did beat Team 12 in um, part one. We went out and we 3 won them, and that was really motivating for us to know that we can, you know, take on some of the best teams. And I think that that's going to motivate us again because we know that if we did it before, then there's no reason why we can't just do it again. Obviously, you don't want to underestimate them because Team 12 is a, is a very strong team. But as long as we you know, put in the work, I, I think that realistically, we're looking to beat Team 12 again. I think Heroes Hearth is on the upswing in general. I'd say I wouldn't be surprised if Heroes Hearth comes in by the end of the phase and reaches maybe the third place spot. I think they're definitely going to be our strong opponent for Tempo because they play very specific team comps and they play them really well. I think as long as we prepare a lot for them, we should be fine, but they might surprise us with something weird. Arthalon always plays really weird stuff, so we gotta watch out for that. Hopefully we don't get Asmodan or something.
Another thing that we have to be keeping in mind when looking at these two teams is the Warrior Pool. Uh, last time we, we saw it at Team 12 versus Gale Force Esports, Garrosh got all the way up to first pick, first ban. Another one that showed up quite a bit over the last series was Diablo. Turns out Heroes Hearth Esports, Ishbu, is actually really good at both those. Maybe one of the few players of both Garrosh and Diablo out of all of Part 1 in Phase 1. And so automatically, that is something that I go, where are those going to fall in the draft for these two teams? So do you have thoughts? I feel like that means Garrosh falls near first pick, first ban. Garrosh is. And I think one of the interesting things is a lot of, when they first, their first iteration that Heroes Hearth had was the Tassadar, Hanzo, Diablo. And they were putting Force Wall, charging directly in, had a lot of Hanzo damage in there. They fell away from a little bit, but Diablo remained as part of that hero pool. So did Hanzo. We haven't seen as much Tassadar. So if you are afraid of something like that with the Garrosh, maybe kick it a little old school. I know it's kind of fallen out of meta a little bit, but I don't see why it couldn't work. So maybe we get that, that big Wombo. Yeah, we got to figure out where we're going for the battleground first, though, as we bring these up. Let's see what we see unfold. Bands coming out. Team 12 is going to rid of Dragonshire, the best map for Heroes Hearth, so not surprising to see them rid of that. Heroes Hearth is going to remove Cursed Hollow. And then, in fact, first map selected, Team 12 taking us to Dragonshire. Sorry, I had that backwards, actually. This is really interesting. With the Cursed Hollow ban? Yeah. Yeah. Mainly... Okay, hold up, though. So, so the Cursed Hollow ban came out from Heroes Hearth Esports. Heroes Hearth Esports has, you know, they haven't been sticking to the Curse Hollow ban. That's been their secondary ban in most cases. But Team 12 normally is the map that the they ban. ban. <laughs> yeah, it's Curse Hollow. So that's why I was like, wait a minute, I got it mixed up because I just assumed that Curse yeah. Hollow ban was Team too. 12. I actually had to scribble through <laughs> my Curse Hollow, and I'm okay. like, wait a minute, this is backwards. I'm, I'm not losing my mind here. I was just like, wait a minute, this is breaking all the norm of what I've seen. So, so pretty big adjustment there. And the fact that this was Team 12 choosing to take us to Dragon Shard, the best map, of Heroes Hearth, or not the best, but definitely one of the more recent prioritized for them. Bold statement here already coming out from Team 12. You know, it was interesting because the game yesterday, obviously, uh, t Team 12 came out, they looked strong on this, and then Gale Force kind of left Tahaka in the top lane a little bit too long, and Team 12 was able to run it down bot lane, but it was by no means flawless for yeah. them. They had a, a lot of control in certain ways, but it wasn't necessarily like a Tempo Storm type dominance. So. You know, we see them first picking it again. Something else, you know, has got to be up here. So we'll see as the Maev is being hovered. Heroes Hearth, obviously, again, Justin mentioned we don't want to get Asmodan or anything like that. That's the Arthalon factor in terms of you never know what he's going to play. The most diverse hero pool in the world in terms of the amount of heroes that he's played. I'm sure that he could easily flex over to something like the Maev if needed. And this is one of the few maps where I know Maev is still strong, but this is one of the few maps where I think I'd be okay letting her through. I think because she provides enough crowd control and gank potential within the four and towards the top half of the map, I don't hate her still being taken away, but I can definitely see the argument for that. And there he is. The man <laughs> is picked up. Garrosh. First selection there for Ishbu on Hero's Heart. It's definitely coming out strong. And, you know, it's interesting because we've seen a little bit of fall off on Malfira and we get an, a Genji and a Malthael. We've seen a lot of Malthael banned out because Garrosh obviously gets that armor with how much health he loses, percentage based damage plus that last right. It's one of the best answers to taking down a Garrosh. That is a very early Malthael lock-in. And the high Genji too without a immediate burst support to back up. Might even get forced into the Rhaegar as we get past the second ban phase. But first, got to figure out what Heroes Hearth want to commit to in their 2-3. With the Genji, they have the Garrosh within the four, matching the kill potential. The Malthael top lane, there's not anything that, unless you wanted the Sonya, which that's using the logic we saw in the last series with the Malthael and the immediate Sonya ban. That's the only reason I could see you wanting to pick it before the second ban phase. But these two teams, probably a slightly different priority, probably let it go through. Hanzo something we got to be keeping our eyes on. Does Heroes Hearth pick it up here? Yeah, I mean, it fell off for a little bit yeah. post nerfs. And all of a sudden, everybody kind of picked back up. We saw the strength of it at the Clash. And since then, in week six, that win rate went up. And it still continues to be up there. It's still one of Kron's best heroes. He's a, he's a killer on it, man. I, this guy has just continued to improve throughout the year. Now he's moved his way up throughout the rankings. Right now, Dreadnought, when you look at Kron, 
He's looking at being number two in North America, which puts him at number three in the world in terms of kills per game. Hanzo is a big part of that. You could say, all right, but does he die? Well, KD-wise, in terms of kill-death ratio, he's top 15 in the world. So not only is he getting the kills, but he's staying alive doing it. Hanzo is definitely one, one way to make that happen. So suddenly now for Team 12 in the second band phase, they're either gotta be choking around the top half of the map if they feel like there's a laning mismatch that they want in their favor for that mouth ale. Other than that, then immediately you've gotta be asking what kind of wave clear or you know kind of prep can they get with the four man and kill potential within that. I can't see a major band kind of being drawn in that avenue. Wow, not what I expected. You know, the thing is that when I look at this, the one thing that Malfurion struggles with is that burst healing, that life-saving moment. If you yep. get a Garrosh down and a Last Rites is on there, Tranquility is normally not going to be enough. Why don't you ban the Blaze? The Blaze, something along that line that can add a save to a Last Rites target. I, I agree with you. Uh, but when I see the Garrosh picked up, a Garrosh Tyrael with a Tyrael offlane is not nearly as threatening. So the Tyrael ban, I feel like I'm wasting a little bit if I want to commit to that, which is why I thought we would see the Blaze banned out from them and not so much commitment towards the Junkrat, especially because I don't look at the Junkrat as a missing element. I mean, Arthalon, we've seen what he can make happen on the hero. It's nothing to laugh at there, even though maybe Junkrat's the one doing a bit of laughing. <laughs> but it does feel, uh, you know, one of those moments where uh, you can see the band and by no means is it like so out of the meta where you're like, where is this kind of going? But I can't help but feel like it was a bit of a whiff. We'll see if it gets punished here. There's the support choke I was talking about before. What do we see for the support here now for Team 12? Yeah, Stukov was very prominent in the drafts yesterday. It was something that we saw Team 12 pick up on this battleground just yesterday. So taking the Stukov away, Malfurion's there. Obviously, you've got the likes of Uther. Uther does not do terribly well into Hanzo, but he's actually not one of the worst. Obviously, we've got Rhaegar, who's actually been on the rise quite a bit. His win rate over the past two weeks has has put him near the middle of the pack, right around 50% win rate. And so Rhaegar's value is rising right now. I mean, in this type of composition, because you don't know the other DPS, I think that Uther is a little bit scary, unless you're willing to commit to the double with the Tyrael picked up at the same rotation. Then I really, really wouldn't mind that. Other than that, I feel like, yeah, Rhaegar's got to be the go-to here for Team 12 in the support role. Other than that, they need something to be able to deal with the Garrosh within the four, and that's why I thought the Junkrat seemed curious, because you'd expect that to possibly be a Johanna Junkrat within the four, get a lot of control on the bottom half of the map, but they've kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit there with that. So now it's really curious. Okay, so instead, all right, a very different direction, using the Chromie, and now the Junkrat ban makes a lot more sense. Uh, kind of deterrent within the four, it's going to limit Hanzo's capabilities, especially with the Malfurion already picked up. Have I ever told you I'm not a big fan of Chromie Genji together. Yeah, you have. You have told me that quite a bit. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. I'm not the biggest <laughs> fan of it either. It, it demands a extreme level of synergy between the squad or an outstanding Genji player, which, you know, Team 12 got one. Yeah, it's just, you know, we'll see as this game unfolds. It's on Hero's Hearth now to pick up their last view. Obviously, the Arthlon hero will be something definitely interesting to watch here. Frontliner, oh, we already have the Frontliner, but Blaze, obviously, in terms of the melee. Obviously, so, we've got Sonya still available. It's not going to be Rexar this time. <laughs> not into a mouth ale. You do not want to do that. Misha is just like, hello, would you like free stacks? Would you like <laughs> to get free heals? Would you like free kills? There's the Blaze and the Tassadar. There's that, safe, there's that safety option. Yeah. I wondered if they might go back down that eventually. I talked about the Hanzo Tassadar being a pairing for them. They had done it a lot with Diablo. They fell off in making sure that that was a, a full, we need all three. But this hits that checkbox of, in case Garrosh gets hit with the last rites, you have some type of saving grace, but also likely to see maybe the redemption build coming out here where you get that extra life leech go redemption to make sure your auto attacks get a little bit quicker that way when you're shielded you're healing a little bit more a little bit more self-sufficient yeah here's heart does have a pretty safe and well-rounded composition from beginning to end and for me it, it still hinges on that second ban out of team 12 with that junkrat removal versus the blaze opportunity but we'll see if they can make it work here right now they've got within the four it's going to be a chromie stitches and a genji more stopping being difficult to siege into and looking to find I ways to, to my last I mean it's really just kind of slowing down the pace of Heroes Arth and hoping you get picks here and there with the Chromie and the stitches and then Genji coming in for a reset. Rhaegar is going to be the choice. I think I like the Rhaegar. I think I like the Rhaegar the most out of that. I mean, outside of that, you're looking at something like a Lucio, which won't provide the right type of healing towards a Genji. Karazam, you don't necessarily want to be in that 
Kieran range, so I think Rhaegar might have been more of the, the safer bet. Plus, You're very strong. You're Uther, though. That is true. He was an my option. Bad, that's, a, that's the only one that I go, <laughs> eh, maybe the Uther in this type of situation. But other than Genji, that is the only person that goes, ooh, I really like this. Other than that, you can make a pretty solid argument there. I wonder if we'll true. see maybe the last right's X strike, maybe combo. Maybe we'll see something a little bit different there. Um, My only hesitation with that is it makes you even that much more into the one shot oh, area, yeah. which we've talked about, you know, the bunker <laughs> being left up with the deterrence on so many levels. So I kind of want to see that sustained DPS. I, granted, I don't feel like the sustained, you know, Dragon Blade is that go is going to be that big of a recovery tool. Uh, but it's one of those moments where I, even though I'm, I think I'm more on X-Strike than I am Dragon Blade for the most part. Here we are, game one between Team 12 and Heroes Hearth Esports in the blue going to be Team 12, where we got Dainsky repping it on that Chromie, throwing out the spells, getting the deterrent in the four-man. Cure is going to be on Genji. Justing playing the Stitches. Goku on that off lane. No, he's going to be playing the Mouth Ale. And Bud supporting out the squad on Rhaegar. On the right side in red will be that of Hero's Hearth. It's going to be BBJ on the Malfurion. Ishbu going to be on Garrosh McIntyre. He's going to be on the Blaze. Arthlon, of course, on the Tassadar. Rounding it out will be Crowen on Hanzo. Five versus five on mid. Ooh, instantly, I'm excited about Stitch's build. What do we see here? Getting that little bit of heal there. He'll, it, uh, chew your food, heal for 10% of your max health over three seconds. So a little bit more self-sustained on that front line. You don't have to necessarily worry about the spell damage. There's a few options you could go. I have uh, to worry about a Garrosh. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if that's the combo you anticipated there, Justin. Yeah, th that feel when the Stitches hook <laughs> works backwards, actually. I'll pull you, you throw me. It's like a, a seesaw. We're just a big old family. Rotation down here for Heroes Hearth. Still winning out of the four for now. The Blaze versus Malthale matchup is actually pretty successful for Malthale. One of the reasons, by the way, why I like that against a Hanzo and a Tassadar is you normally get your health whittled down a little bit. You don't necessarily get burst the same manner, so you can kind of heal up over the, a small period of time without having to worry about the giant burst, and then maybe, you know, just kind of survive a little bit longer. Here's our start with an immediate giant camp. It's been matched, though, out of Team 12 as they mirror that on the bottom giants. It's going to be about what they get after this. So Heroes Hearth has an amazing tri lane between Malfurion, and Hanzo, Tassadar. If that three man goes down to defend that camp, Garrosh with the soak up mid and Blaze pretty effective in the one versus one. They're going to gain more than you see out of this night camp in the top half. But if they fail to pressure that, then suddenly this night camp on the top half after the Giants are cleared on bottom is going to be a huge advantage for Team 12. Right now, Crowan and team trying to clear up this bottom. Tassadar, Arthalan's made his way over, getting some of that damage down. It was indeed the redemption build picked up by Crone. No surprise there. Chromie dropping some bombs there onto the Siege Giants, trying to be healed up by BBJ. Yeah, Tassadar actually immediately made the rotation to bottom. You saw him show for that kind of one rotation of shields in the W and then immediately went up top. He was just not going to be willing to stick around here. Personally, I fall in that kind of avenue of liking to see more out of that. Ishbu able to dodge that hook. He'll keep him alive get the rebuttal there on the Goku. But I, I like to see the tri-lane defense greater than the response on the top half of the map. That in mind, though, it's not like Heroes Hearth is, you know, kind of setting themselves too far, far back by any means here. This is a very try and self-sustained build. Cure, lucky to get out of there. But Stitches continuing to go into the self-heal, going amplified healing, making sure to amp up any regenerative effects and all healing by 30%. So definitely looking to survive and just kind of be that stalwart. Stitches, mind you, has the highest base health pool in the game, so making himself even a bit more tanky. I was wondering if we would see any adjustments with, you know, Aka face to be able to support Amplified Healing, but uh, you, uh, normally if you did see anything, it would be at the four talent tier, just because you go into Spirit Walkers within that 13 Tidal Waves and get multiple cues with Amplified Healing out. But it's gonna stick to the norm meta build here onto the Rhaegar. Trialing pressure towards top. We'll net a turret at least here for Team 12. Doing a good job. McIntyre using that Pyromania to make sure and clear those minions so that as soon as possible, those tower shots will go over to Team 12. Was able to do that, but not before that tower was picked up. So good on them, and we'll see at the bottom lane. That has opened up quite a bit as that entire wall is now gone. Garrosh, though, is going to be stuck kind of in an island, body block to death. Tassadar gives out the shield, but you see constant attempts to get the body blocks. Now, Arthalon can maybe body block it back, but there's the pole. Pulling Justing back. Ishbu actually going to flip over Cure, get the Groundbreaker. Auto attacks there. Now Ishbu coming, or BBJ coming in. Not going to land the root. 
But that, honestly, that I thought for sure that was a dead issue, 100%. <laughs> and I guess that kind of shows the beauty of effective HP. Shielding plus armor equals, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Justing, on the other hand, is going somewhere. And that's going to be the afterlife. Nice flip over. Another kill here for Hero's Heart. I love this adjustment. Again, continuing to go into that auto attack build is going to be Crowan. That armor reduction at level 7, you could see just applying so much there. Stitches does not have the mobility unless he goes Putrid Bile to get the extra movement speed. So the fact that he cannot run away from a Hanzo just constantly poking him, poking him, and reducing that damage could mount up in a lot of situations later down the road. That one, probably a little bit easier. See what laning choices we see out of Hero's Hearth, where they decide to apply pressure. BBJ trying to get to channel. Not going to happen, though. His bottom's taken. Uh, mainly, Tassadar's been stuck in the mid lane, which is not ideally what you want in this type of composition. But because the wave clear is effective enough between the Stitches Genji and the Genji rotation towards tops fast enough, they haven't really been able to make much happen here. Now we finally see that kind of tri-lane come together over that bottom half of the map. But when the front wall is already down, I was wondering, would they cycle that pressure top instead and, you know, try and further their lead uh, like, you know, saw Team 12 trying to do on the bo uh, top half as a response to the bottom pressure out of Heroes Art. I mean, the whole thing to that point is the fact that what sieging does Team 12 have? That if you leave a lane for a brief second, are you really afraid yeah. that they're going to walk up and take your walls? And when you have a Chromie Genji, probably not. Yeah, it's very, very limited, and even more so when you have the Garrosh opportunity to flip over the wall. You know, Jet Propulsion is one of the better catch-you-off-guard anti-siege tools. Double Shrine Control here for Heroes Heart Esports as we're rounding the tens. Uh, Team 12, I don't know if they're going to be able to do too much here. Obviously, with 10, very, very close. Obviously, they'd like to get this push forward, get some Siege Giant Temporal. value. Temporal Loop was used. I believe that was... Was yeah. it into fray flip? I think it was into the fray that was managed to get him out of there. See, the battery went with the, like, I guess he can't go with the nature cure. So, yeah. Creative plays here. Four heroes are so far. So far, so good. Obviously, going to have to keep an eye on that. Good heads up play by Ishbu there. But right now, 10 has been picked up. Nothing out of the ordinary. We will see a tranquility this time. No Twilight Dream to maybe interrupt that Genji on the backside. So, keeping his team alive against a potential Last Rites or Tormented Souls, depending on what comes in there. But again, having that shielding from Tassadar, going to be crucial if that Last Rites does come into play against that Garrosh. I will say one, you know, kind of choice when you're deciding, do I go Trank, do I go Twilight? Without a doubt, with a Blaze on your team with Bunker, I really enjoy the Tranquility pickup, how much utility that provides and capability in the team fight. Bottom Altar was picked up, but it comes at the cost of maybe Cure, or at least an X Strike. Groundbreaker going to be thrown out. Flip on a Goku. He teleports over. He's going to be met with a Warlord's Challenge. He accepts the challenge. Uses the last rites. Doesn't come out on top, though. Ends up falling. Crowan. It's like, guys, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Like He hunted that Genji down. Genji had to use the X-Strike. And they're like, well, we've got a mouth ill instead. Let's just go here. And it's just ultimate team play. You saw the shielding come in there the minute last rites went out. Short enough cooldown. You know, obviously, when you look at the X-Strike and the Dragon Arrow, I mean, the favor is definitely on the Dragon Arrow, so I feel like a lot was accomplished and a lot was picked up there by Hero's Hearth as well as that full level lead. Hook lands onto Ishbu. There's the Gorge. Malfurion going to get the root. Nice cleanse from Buds. Gaining maximum ground. Indomitable keeping Ishbu up. Hits the Groundbreaker. Unable to get in range for a toss. Will end up getting it after the Ancestral. Now Arthalon looking to join the fight. Bunker dropped by McIntyre. Genji Swift strikes back. Man, that Bunker as well as just the... The sharpened arrowheads coming in there. On the back side, you can actually see Ishbu going to pick up that first Dragon Knight. And they're holding strong. You know, the cleanse was good. I just think that without that wall there, I didn't. there was no way they were going to make it across. <laughs> Everyone can uh. escape the stitches here for Hero Star <laughs> Esports. Even when the Hanzo gets hooked, he has an escape. Not able to find anything yet so far here for Team 12. Kill list so far with the stitches composition. I will say Ishbu's uh, a bit overzealous here with his Dragonite in terms of how much yeah. damage he ended up taking in the bottom half. I feel like they could have stalled this out a little bit slower. They will round the 13s. Where do we see them apply the pressure? Crowan is making his way towards the top half with BBJ. This is where I'd like to see them, you know, kind of focus the top half because Malthale cannot, you know, zone off that top or remain in that top lane very long because he's so susceptible to ganks. Instead, just going to cycle the mid. Enough damage out from Dainsky. Speaking of Dainsky, there have not been these big skirmishes, or at least that the even up on the bottom lane and the amount of mobility and control that we've seen. Dainsky only has 15 there stacks so far. 
that is the exact reason I was wondering if we would see Hero's Hearth pressure top and set, because it is so easy to find a gank on the mouth though, compared to a majority of offlaners that exist. He only exists because of his wave clear being so good at his individual skirmishing and sustain. When it comes to like, hey, oh, I'm getting ganked, like cross compared to that to a Dahaka or a, Bla a Blaze, right? Like that is a t one second gank versus a 10 second. Are we still going to get this kill? Seems to be working out. Goku, obviously, uh, not doing so hot this game on that solo. So right now, Hero's Hearth picking up the camp's invade on the bottom left, now picking up their own siege camp. Without that fort on the bottom, I mean, where do we kind of see the control for Hero's Hearth? I mean, the, the, the forts are exposed, you know, in that mid lane, and obviously top lane has a little bit of pressure. Just rotate here mid, try and put pressure on. I mean, ideally, I would definitely say it's still going to be in the top half, but they're not posturing to do so. If they were, it would have been with the 13 frame over that night camp and then get the pressure towards top. Now that they've given up that window, I would say it would be with the night camp into a giant camp prepping over the next Dragonite phase is the biggest thing that they keep in mind. So they're going to look to cycle mid. Now, Sonic Arrow just trying to keep vision on and around the area. Hook going to miss, hitting on to just risky. a minion. Cure going in, getting really the risky. toss and taunt. You cannot make that one happen, Dredd. Yeah, there goes the one shot there on to the Genji. And even though I you know, I was saying that, it was risky on the side of Heroes Heart, not the other way around. Team 12 going in there and getting blown up one shot. The punishment once again from Ishbu. It's got to be cleaned up some way. Otherwise, this is going to be very much Heroes Heart game to claim for themselves in game number one, up two levels, and now we're going to be rounding double shrine control, seven second advantage before Genji even spawns in a Dragonite. This is inevitably the 16 after that middle fort ends up dropping the rotation towards bottom, keep wall. Team 12, this is, I mean, likely, I would argue even maybe a keep if they play this very, very clean for Heroes Art. They can't make this Dragonite wasted the same way Ishbu kind of did with the first one, but. That's, we got Arthlon in it this go round. Obviously, you have a little bit more frontline control. Anybody does step out, obviously, you can get a little bit more CC going on there. You can see the safe route from Heroes Hearth, making sure not to, to deal with anything. They'll also need to clear up these minions. You want to get the minions pushing. That way, they eat those tower shots. Definitely a little bit more reserved with this push. Still, two level advantage. How much happens after the Dragonite's the question. Dainsky making a rain on that Chromie, trying to stop the advance any farther. Hook come out once this wall drops. Expect this. No attempt. Well, the well's going down. Justin, Hook's going to miss off to the side there. There's a few minions here, but there's not going to be enough pressure. 16 to 14, it's just so hard to stay in there. Again, Gorge is still a threat. There's still so much going on there. Temporal loop, they're going to back out. You know, the night, the night camp is going to be at the bottom. You mentioned doubling up with the Siege Giants in the night camp. This might be an opportunity soon as we already see them heading down towards the Knights when it comes to the Siege Giant, the bottom left, 10 seconds away from the Knights on the side of Team 12. So if they get that invade and double up, that's going to be a keep going down. Yeah, it should very much be the keep for them. I can't help but feel like they could have gotten a little bit more out of that last Dragonite, but they're still going to find a way to make it happen here. In the downtime, Team 12 understand the cir cir circumstances and situation. Pick up the Night Camp for themselves on top. Ideally, somebody wants to stay top and ensure that that gets the fort, but they're not going to do that. Instead, they're going to back out, try and get a full defense. Personally, I feel like this bottom keeps dead no matter what, and I don't think there's any way you get the 16 time frame, a miracle hook play, the way that Team 12 is hoping. Going to be a bit more optimistic. We'll see. It's going to be impossible to save, I believe, there. As you can see, Chromie doing her best to take down that mage that's providing that spell aura, and they're hiding under it. As long as that's around, I think they're going to go, but Justine's looking for a hook. Just going to miss there. Without the 16s now, Heroes Hearth, they can back out. They can pick up the Giants. Night Camp is going to be an immediate answer for Team 12. It's the only way they can stop the bleeding in the top half, and somebody on Heroes Hearth is going to have to answer towards that. Heroes Hearth is pretty poor this game, in particular with uh, prepping their Dragonite phases to make the next one immediate, and Team 12 should capitalize on this. They have an advantage over the top half of the map, only the top half of the map, for a very small time frame on the same talent tier. They can reasonably get a rotation out of Hero's Hearth towards the top or even bottom if they realistically make it happen, unless this happens. One catch out there on the Goku, and Hero's Hearth has literally nothing to fear. I take back everything I said over the past <laughs> 20 seconds. I, I feel bad, man. We praise Goku a lot, but this game has been a little bit of a struggle for him on that mouth hill. I will say... With the rise of Goku in, you know, North America over the past, looking at 2017 all the way through 2018, 
Uh, if we do look at kind of the before that time frame, he still had moments of absolute greatness on those off rolls, but there was, you know, a tendency to be able to get caught out. And personally, I feel like it's been a lot of like, it normally feels like when it's comfortability within the team or, you know, an environment that exists around him that we see this kind of uncharacteristic play. I don't know if that's the case here for Team 12, but it's definitely something we've seen way, way back from him. Everybody's trying to do their best to dodge the shots as Arthlon was trying to get the channel unable to do so. Tranquility's out. Temporal Loop is there as well. Ancestral goes Missed down. It. Had to have been going on that Genji, or at least attempting yeah. to. And that's enough to be able to get the first kill. Second kill, last right goes out, but it's not going to matter. Three members of Team 12 drop. Heroes Heart pick up the Dragon, a 9-0, to zero, 14 minutes <laughs> in. And we got the Gale Force Esports spray. Oh, my. Anybody wondering the relevance of that? Again, it is because we just saw Team 12 get reverse swept in fall to a the biggest upset we've had so far. Two Gale Force Esports just on Friday. Heroes Heart, full of flair with this team. Dragonite making its way to the core. That's going to be Arthlon on there. Still several seconds before members of Team 12 are here. But the core falling on the side of Team 12. This was their map choice, Dread. Things did not go well as nine kills to zero on the side of Heroes Heart. Yeah, the map selection was Team 12's, and you and I, we talked about it, right? Like, it was so not what I expected. I actually, my brain just told me, you're seeing this wrong. The graphic is wrong, or something <laughs> is wrong. There's no way that we saw them choose that into Heroes Heart. I'm going to leave that at, they think that it was a draft advantage from the second slot position. They don't think that they're that poor on the map whatsoever. And so by taking Heroes Heart to one of their favorite maps, they're going to have to play it eventually. You might as well get it from what you consider a good draft position. The only other thing is, is if there has to be at least one other map that they consider overlapping with Heroes Heart for that actually to be a worth decision. But it's very apparent that they agree to kind of that statement is in fact true. I like when there's not that much threat and we get this type of draft from Heroes Heart. You know, I mentioned last week, right, when we watched Heroes Hearth, is just like there's so much put on Crowan's shoulders. Again, when it comes to kill participation, he's near the top. But when it comes to the percentage of kills that he has for his team ranking up there, it's 42% of his team's kills. The next highest, I think, is somewhere like 36%. Average for those range rolls is around 28 to 30. I went back, I double-checked all that. Crowan's doing a lot in terms of that. Now, you know, they kind of have that support there. If you're going to go all in on that, support that. Have the ability to do that or have Arthlon more flex over to some of those heroes. And it seems like their drafts lately have kind of been get that frontline control between McIntyre and B and Ishbu and then try and make sure Arthlon can either support Crowan or do a little bit of damage himself. And so the last few weeks, we actually see that number come down a little bit. Others start to rise. So for Heroes Hearth, I really like where we're seeing them go in some of these drafts. Uh, Heroes Hearth's drafting has been